going through all of these cards with you all. So I appreciate you. Um, let's let's do this dang thing. What is going on, everybody? We are doing the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth Magic full set review. We've done all of the solo colors, and now we're moving on to gold cards, multicolored. Um, amazing cards so far there's been a lot of bangers a lot of sleepers i think and a lot of really exciting things to build around so i'm excited to see what the gold cards have in store for us um being such a legendary story uh set of novels universe i'm assuming that there's going to be a lot of legendary creatures and a lot of things actually care about legendary creatures, so I'm assuming that this is going to be quite a large list. Um, let's start right away, shall we? Um, our first gold card is... Wait. This is such random order, why? Doesn't matter. Old Man Willow is our first legendary card. Um, I don't believe that that is... No, this is 217, so it's definitely not in uh, order. Uh, Old Man Willow is two and a black and a green for a star star tree folk legendary creature. Old Man Willow's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Very powerful. Whenever Old Man Willow attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or token. When you do, target creature and opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. That's pretty good. Uh, next up, we have Shadow Summoning. Why is this in such a weird order? Hold on one sec. Um, nope. Uh, all right, I guess we just ball then. Um, Shadow Summoning is next. One white, one black for a sorcery. Create two tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying. Not bad. Sorcery speed, though, it's a little soft. I don't love it. Um, you can't do this on end step to have access to two untapped creatures right away. Um, it's a little weird. Next up, we have Aragorn Company Leader. One white... One green, white, for a 3-3 human ranger, legendary creature. Look at that. He's got Frodo and Sam in his little boat. Whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Aragorn as your ring bearer, uh, put your choice of counters from First Strike, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink on Aragorn. Uh, that's really cool. Whenever you put one or more counters on Aragorn, put one of each of those kind of counters on up to one other target creature. That's pretty crazy. So I'm just going to jump quickly over to this, which is the explanation of what it means when the ring tempts you. So as the ring tempts you, you get an emblem named the ring. If you don't have one, then your emblem gains its next ability in order and you choose a creature you control to become or remain the ring bearer. So if you have a creature and the ring tempts you, you have to pick one of your creatures to be the ring bearer. The ring is this token that levels up over the game every time the ring tempts you. Interestingly enough, all of the ring's abilities are all positives. There really isn't any negatives other than some cards work better or worse against ring bearers. So it's interesting that they wouldn't have much of a downside to using the ring. Um, but every time the ring tempts you, you level up or level down, I guess, the ring, and it maintains all of the abilities above it. So uh, whoever's your ring bearer gets a lot of cool things that they can do. And that is Aragorn. So every time the ring tempts you, as long as you have another creature you can choose, you make them the ring bearer or keep them as the ring bearer, and then you can put a counter, a first strike, vigilance, death touch, or lifelink counter on Aragorn. And whenever you do that, you can put one of each of those counters on another target creature. Preferably your ring bearer, probably. That's pretty cool. I think this card is super powerful. Only three mana, and it's really powerful. 
Next up, we have Aragorn the Uniter. So Aragorn the Uniter is every color but black. One red, one green, one white, one blue. Weird order. I don't know how to put those in, but anyway. Uh, Aragorn the Uniter is 5-5 five, five, human noble legendary creature. So you get a 5-5 five, five, uh, for only 4 mana. Whenever you cast a white spell, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Cool. Whenever you cast a blue spell, scry 2. Also cool. Whenever you cast a red spell, Aragorn the Uniter deals 3 damage to target opponent. Also cool. Whenever you cast a green spell, target creature gets plus 4, plus 4 until end of turn. So Aragorn kind of has that... Um, what is that guy called? The, the White King card that has a bunch of different colored abilities on it. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, I like that he includes all four of these colors and does things depending on those colors. He does those colored things. Uh, very cool card. I think this Aragorn is very interesting. This Aragorn is very powerful. Next up, we have Arwen, Mortal Queen. Um, one green white for a 2 2 elf noble legendary creature. Uh, Arwen, Mortal Queen, enters the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it. You can pay one to remove an indestructible counter from Arwen. Another target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Put a 1 1 counter and a lifelink counter on that creature, and a 1 1 counter and a lifelink counter on Arwen. So Arwen and Aragorn obviously are a little bit of a thing. So them kind of working in tandem really makes a lot of sense. Um, I like that. And then we've got another Arwen card. Arwen Undomiel. Undomiel. Uh, green and a blue for a 2-2 elf noble legendary creature. Whenever you scry, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. That's really good, actually. Um, and then you can pay four green, blue to scry two, which you hopefully are never doing because that's ridiculously expensive for that small of a scry. Um, but again, elves loving scrying is a thing in this set and putting a 1-1 counter on target creature is really powerful. You get to choose. I think that's really good. I think Arwen is, this version of Arwen is my favorite. Uh, next up, we've got the Balrog, Durin's Bane. Five black red for a 7-5 Avatar Demon legendary creature. This spell costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this turn. It has haste. The Balrog can't be blocked except by legendary creatures, like Gandalf. When the Balrog dies, destroy target artifact or creature an opponent controls, like Gandalf. That's pretty cool. I like that card. The art is pretty dope, too. I like it. Next up, we have Bilbo, Retired Burglar. One blue, red for a 1-3 halfling rogue legendary creature. When Bilbo enters the battle or leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. Okay. Whenever Bilbo deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. That's not bad. Dealing treasure, tempting rings. I like that. Next up is Butterbur, Bree Innkeeper. Two green white for a 3-3 human peasant legendary creature. At the beginning of your end step, if you don't control a food token, create a food token. That's pretty decent. There are some cards in... Lorwyn I think or Eldrain that did that same similar thing next up we have Denethor ruling steward one white black for a 2-4 human noble legendary creature at the beginning of your end step if a creature died under your control this turn create a 1-1 white human soldier creature token then you can pay 2 sacrifice another creature each opponent loses one life and you gain one life so Denethor can drain if you sack creatures. Um, that's pretty good. And he's making creatures, so um, he's kind of a self-assembling cycle here. I like it. Next up, we have Doors of Durin. 
That's really cool. I love the doors of Durin. Three red green for a legendary artifact. Whenever you attack Scry 2, then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield tapped and attacking until your next turn against Trample if you control a dwarf and Hexproof if you control an elf. That's so much fun. That's so much flavor all packed in there. Real nice and tight. It's very useful. You get to scry too, so you can set it up so that you put a creature card on top of your library. Um, and then it has like an intricate... Um, an intricate creatures matter thing where if you have a dwarf like Gimli, then you get trample if you have an elf like legolas you get hexproof i think that's really cool next up we have elrond master of healing two green blue for a four four elf noble legendary creature whenever you scry put a one one counter on each of up to x target creatures where x is the number of cards looked at while scrying Whenever a creature you control with a 1-1 counter on it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Wow. Uh, that's really powerful. Um, next up we have Ewin. Ewin. I feel like, like I'm speaking baby language or something. Ewin. Fearless Knight. Two red white for a 3-4 human knight legendary creature with haste. When Ewin Fearless Knight enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with greater power. Legendary creatures you control gain protection from each of that creature's colors until end of turn. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, lots of utility there. Uh, next up, we've got Faramir, Prince of Ithilien. Two white blue for a 3-3 human noble legendary creature. At the beginning of your end step, Choose an opponent. At the beginning of that player's next end step, you draw a card if they didn't attack you this turn. Otherwise, create three 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens. So you choose an opponent. If they don't attack you, you get to draw a card. If they do attack you, you get to make three 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens. So they're kind of incentivized not to attack you, which I think is the point. Uh, that's kind of fun. Uh, next up, we've got Flame of Anor. Anor. One blue, red for an instant. Choose one. If you control a wizard as you cast this spell, like Gandalf, you may choose two instead. Target player draws two cards, destroy target artifact, or Flame of Anor deals five damage to target creature. I love this card. This card's great. I love it. Uh, next up, we've got Friendly Rivalry. Here's Legolas and um, Gimli fighting orcs, counting kills. Uh, red, one red, one green for an instant target creature you control and up to one other target legendary creature you control. Each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. So it's a little team up effort. I love that. Um, I like that they stipulated that the second target, the other target creature you control has to be a legendary. Assuming that you're going to target Gimli or Legolas with this ability, then you can choose the other. But you can't choose like a random token or anything like that. You have to choose a legendary creature. Um, I like that. Next up, we have Frodo Baggins with the sick fit. Look at that jacket. Frodo Baggins is one green, one white for a 1-3 halfling scout. Whenever Frodo Baggins or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, the ring tempts you. As long as Frodo is your ring bearer, it must be blocked if able. Interesting. I'm sure you can do some fun stuff with that. Um, next up is Galadriel of Lothorian. Lothlorian. One, a green and a blue for a 3-3 elf noble legendary creature. Whenever the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Galadriel as your ring bearer, scry three. Whenever you scry, you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. So you scry three, you can set yourself up to reveal a land almost every time. So it's just a nice little ramp commander. Uh, I like it. Next up, we have Gandalf the Grey. Three blue red for a three, four avatar wizard. 
Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one that hasn't been chosen. You may tap or untap target permanent. Gandalf the Grey deals three damage to each opponent. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets or put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. So you want to do the first three and then you do the last one to reset Gandalf, play him again, and then you get to do the first three again. Um, but you can only choose these once. So you have to choose them and reset him somehow. Uh, next up is Gandalf Sanction. One blue red for a sorcery. Gandalf Sanction deals X damage to target creature where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. That is a bonkers spell. If you're playing a Gandalf deck, like this is obviously paired with this version of Gandalf, right? It's blue red. Um, this cares about instants and sorceries. This cares about instants and sorceries. If you're playing a heavy instant and sorcery deck, you're looking at maybe having like 15 instants and sorceries in your graveyard at like any given time in the mid game. And for three mana, you get to deal that much damage to something and have it trample over to its controller. That just seems absurd. Uh, next up, we've got Gimli, Mournful Avenger. Oh, sad Gimli. Oh, no. Um, Gimli is one red green for a 3-2 dwarf warrior. Gimli has indestructible as long as two or more creatures died under your control this turn. Oh, no. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Gimli. Okay. When this ability resolves for the third time this turn, Gimli fights up to one target creature you don't control. Immediately tries to get revenge. I love that. I love that, Gimli. I love that for you. Immediately. If, you, if three creatures die, you get to immediately take revenge on them. And the best part is, is it just says if they die. It doesn't say if they died during combat or if they were dealt damage. Um, you can kill the third one if you want. And you get to put 1-1 one, one counters on Gimli every time. Pretty cool. Uh, next up is Gwai here, the Wind Lord. Four white blue for a 4-4 four, four bird noble. This spell costs two less to cast as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. It has flying and vigilance and other birds you control have vigilance. Pretty cool. Not a lot of bird lords out there. Um, giving all your birds vigilance is really scary because you know having flying things that don't tap when they attack uh, can be pretty powerful. I like this. I'm saying that name wrong 100%, but I like it. Next up, we've got King of the Oathbreakers. This looks a little cartoony. I kind of like that. Um, two white black for a 3-3 three, three spirit noble. Legendary creature with flying. With flying? Just because he has no legs doesn't mean he's flying. What? <laughs> Whenever King of the Oathbreakers or another spirit you control becomes the target of a spell, it phases out. Whenever King of the Oathbreakers or another spirit you control phases in, create a tapped 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. <laughs> That's fun. Uh, you get to kind of like build up your, your creature or your spirit token army while playing the King of the Spirits. That's, that's pretty fun. I think it having flying is hilarious to me. Um, but yeah, not bad. Next up, oh, we finally get the Legolas counter of kills. We talked about the Gimli counter of kills back in the red segment. Now we're on to gold. Legolas counter of kills is two, a green and a blue for a two, three elf archer with reach. Whenever you scry, if Legolas counter of kills is tapped, you may untap it. Do this only once per turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a 1-1 counter on Legolas. And Gimli had a very similar thing. Um, they had Trample instead of Reach. Um, and they also have the when something an opponent controls dies, it gets a 1-1 counter. So I like it. It's very flavorful to have them 
both there. It's very strange to me that they don't have partner and they can't partner with each other, but that's a whole nother story. I think they're like friendly, but they're also competitive. So maybe they didn't give them partner because they want two people at the table playing, playing them and not have them all not have them on the same side necessarily because they're kind of like playing off of each other and friendly friendly competition you know next up we have lotho corrupt sheriff one white one black for a two one halfling rogue whenever a player casts their second spell each turn you lose a life and create a treasure token interesting okay i mean that's fine i guess uh, next up is Mauher Urek High Captain. One black, one red for a 2 2 orc soldier with menace. If one or more 1 1 counters will be put on an army, goblin, or orc, put that many plus one 1 1 counters uh, instead. Well, that's good. It just gives you one extra counter. I like that. It's a 2 mana 2 2 with menace. That's a straight up good deal as is. Uh, next up, we have Mary Esquire of Rohan. Uh, a red and a white for a 2-2 Halfling Knight legendary creature with haste. Mary has first strike as long as it's equipped. Whenever you attack with Mary or another legendary creature, draw a card. That's really cool. There's not a lot of card draw in red and white, so giving Mary a uh, card draw depending on whether you attack with it or other legendary creatures or and other legendary creatures i think that's fun next up is the mouth of sauron sauron the mouth of sauron it's three and a demir one blue one black for a three four human advisor that person doesn't look like they're advising anything that person looks like they're there to f stuff up uh, take names and chew bubblegum if you know what I mean, I don't see any advising going on. Uh, when the mouth of Sauron enters the battlefield, target player mills three cards, then a mass orcs X, where X is the number of instants and sorcery cards in that player's graveyard. What? That's immense. That could be a huge number. Man, we were just talking about that. Um, where did it go? That that Gandalf ability this one where it deals dam X damage according to how many instants and sorceries are in your graveyard if you cast this and make that opponent mill those cards you're gonna have like a 10 plus orc army immediately just right there uh, next up is Pippin Guard of the Citadel, one white, one blue for a 2-2 two -two halfling soldier with vigilance and ward one. You can tap Pippin, another target creature you control gains protection from the card type of your choice until end of turn. The card type. You have to choose a card type? So you can just choose creature? Or instant? Or sorcery until end of turn that's so weird I kind of like it but it's weird uh, next up is Prince Imrahil the fair are they fair like they split things evenly or are they fair like they're damn you fair cuz damn he fair uh, Prince Imrahil is one white, one blue for a 2-2 two -two human noble. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 one -one white human soldier. Creature token. Not bad. Next up is Ring Sight. One blue, black for a sorcery. The ring tempts you. Search your library for a card that shares a color with the le a legendary creature you control. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. I like that a lot. Especially in my Ring Wraiths deck. I'm going to like that a lot. Rise of the Witch King. Why is it in green? Two black green for a sorcery. Each player sacrifices a creature. If you sacrificed a creature this way, you may return another permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Dang. Dang. I guess they had to make it green and black because the 
thing that's happening on the card is very Golgari. I get it. I get it. Samwise Gamgee. I like that they're doing just the full names on some of these cards. And they're not giving them titles or trying to tell us like what part of the story we're at with them. They're just Samwise Gamgee. Uh, Samwise Gamgee is one green, one white for a 2-2 halfling peasant. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a food token. And you can sacrifice three foods, return target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. Historic are artifacts, legendaries, sagas. Uh, next up is Sauron of Many Colors. He is three and an Esper, so one white, one blue, one black. For a 5-4 Avatar Wizard, with Ward, discard an enchantment, instant, or sorcery. So against the creature deck, this you can't touch Sauron. You have to discard an enchantment, instant, or sorcery to target it. That's pretty weird. I've never seen that before. Um... Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, each opponent mills two cards. When one or more cards are milled this way, exile target enchantment, instant, or sorcery card with equal or less of value than the spell from than that spell from an opponent's graveyard. Copy the exile card. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Let me read that one more time. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, each opponent mills two cards. Okay. Everyone flips two cards into their graveyard. Whenever one or more cards are milled this way, exile target enchantment, instant, or sorcery card with equal or less a mana value than that spell from an opponent's graveyard. When one or more cards are milled that way, exile target enchantment, instant, or sorcery card with equal or less a mana value then that card then that spell from an opponent's graveyard I don't understand what card is designating the mana value if they're milling two cards is it both of them combined is it one of them whenever one or more cards are milled this way exile target enchantment instant or sorcery card with equal or less a mana value than that spell from an opponent's graveyard. Very interesting. I mean, it's an Esper Enchantments deck. You can t take other people's enchantments or instants or sorceries. I think it, I think it's good. I just don't understand what's telling me the mana value. Uh, next up is Sauron, the Dark Lord. Reached his final form, has he? Three and a Grixis, so a blue, a black, and a red. For a 7-6 horror legendary creature with ward to sacrifice a legendary artifact or legendary creature. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, amass orcs one. Any spell, just a spell. Whenever an army you control deals combat damage to a player, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, you may discard your hand if you do draw four cards. Wow. That's really powerful. Um, I mean, five mana, mythic... The titular bad guy of all of Lord of the Rings, of course it's going to be a powerful card. Um, sorry, six mana, not five mana. I think that's really, really strong. Uh, next up is Sauron's Ransom. One blue, black for an instant. Choose an opponent. They look at the top four cards of your library and separate them into two, into a face down pile and a face up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. The ring tempts you. That's interesting. Fact or fiction? Shadow facts. Look at that beautiful art. Jeez. Shadow facts. Lord of horses. I am the Lord of horses. Three red, white for a 4-4 four, four horse. Legendary creature, of course. It's the Lord of horses. Um, horses you control have haste. Um... And someone, I saw someone note on Twitter that this is the first time that Wizards has ever printed the explanation of haste on Shadow, on a card. Because there's a, apparently, and this 
pardon my ignorance. Shadow facts east. Because, so this is a huge, huge flavor win for Wizards of the Coast, the design team, the writing team, everything. There's a scene in Lord of the Rings where Gandalf says, Shadow facts, show us the meaning of haste. As in, like, run as fast as you can. But the Shadow Facts card literally is showing us the meaning of haste. Something they've never explained on a card before. So, that is like four layers deep cut. I think it's brilliant. I don't even care if the card's garbage. Um... Who cares if you have a horse lord? I think just just for that one tidbit, the entire team should get a raise. Everyone should get a one ring. Give them all something great. Amazing, amazing. Hands down, the best flavor win in this entire set. I don't care. You can't argue with me. Uh, but let's read the rest of the card. I completely forgot there's more words. Whenever Shadowfax, Lord of Horses, attacks, you may put a creature card with lesser power from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attack. Actually, this is a pretty decent card. Forget everything I just said, except for the part where this is the best flavor win in the entire set. This is actually not a terrible card. Especially in red and white, you've got a lot of lower... You just have to have something that's less than four power in your hand, which is going to be a lot of things. There's lots of white weenies. There's lots of goblins. There's lots of dwarves. Almost none of them have four or more power. So Shadowfax is actually kind of dope. And then on top, the cherry on top is that it's a good card. The whole cake, cupcake, cherry on top, Sunday. The analogy is about a Sunday. The cherry on top is that it's a good card. The rest of the Sunday is that one flavor win. Because Gandalf literally said the line, Shadow facts show us the meaning of haste. And I think that's so brilliant. So brilliant. Next up is Shagrat Loot Bearer. Two black red for a 4 4 orc soldier, legendary creature. Whenever Shagrat attacks, attach up to one target equipment to it. Then amass Orcs X, where X is the number of equipments attacks attached to Shagrat. That's pretty good. That's pretty cool. I like it. Such a drastic contrast to Shadow Shadow Facts. Uh, next up we have Sharky, Tyrant of the Shire. That's definitely not Sauron. Pay no attention. Um Sharky is two blue and a black for a 2-4 avatar rogue legendary creature. Activated abilities of lands your opponent's control can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Sharky, Tyrant of the Shire, has all activated abilities of lands your opponent's control except mana abilities. And mana of any type can be spent to activate Sharky's abilities. This is really cool. Um has absolutely no place in the ring race deck I'm going to build, but I want to include it anyway because I want to shut down all my opponent's lands. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, next up, avert your eyes if you have arachnophobia. It's Shalob, child of Ungoliant. Ch child of Ungoliant. Four black green for an 8-8 eight, eight spider demon. Six mana for an 8-8 eight, eight with Ward 2 and Death Touch. Better yet, other spiders you control have Death Touch and Ward 2. Whenever another creature dealt damage this turn by a spider you control dies, accept or create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a food artifact with pay 2, sacrifice this, gain 3 life. It loses all other card types. This is really fun. You get... ETB triggers, you get triggered abilities on uh, these food tokens um, and you get to sacrifice them as if they're food tokens 
This is another flavor win because Shalob obviously is known for, you know, spindling his webs and, and capturing people and eating them. So turning other people's creatures into food because they've webbed them up and they get to sit there and eventually get eaten. I think that's fantastic. Fantastic. Terrifying card. Really powerful. If there's enough spiders to build an actual spider deck, which I believe there probably is, um, I think that it's going to be quite a powerful deck. Let me just do a real quick search on Typeline uh, Spider. There's 77 spider cards. I'm assuming almost all of them are green and black. I'm not seeing any in my initial scroll that aren't green or black or colorless. There's a few colorless ones. And there's some with a third color or a second color that isn't green or black. Um, but for the most part, you can definitely make a spider deck and it's going to be really hard to get through and deal damage because uh, all spiders will have death touch and ward too. Next up is Smeagol Helpful Guide. Doesn't look very nice. Uh, one black green for a 4-2 halfling horror. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died under your control this turn, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into their graveyard. That's brutal. Um, but I like it. I, I think that's fun. Strider, Ranger of the North. Um, this is Aragorn at his coolest. Uh, Strider is two red black for a 4-4 human ranger with landfall. Another landfall card. Nice. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Then, if that creature has power four or greater, it gains first strike until end of turn. That's really cool. I like that. It's not scary. It's just useful. Uh, next up, we have Theoden, King of Rohan. One red, white for a 2-3 human noble. Whenever Theoden... Or another human enters the battlefield under your control. Target creature gains double strike until end of turn. Not too shabby. Nothing crazy, but it's fun. And then we've got Tom Bombadil. The god bard himself. Uh, Tom Bombadil is Wooberg. White, blue, black, red, green. For a 4-4 four, four god bard legendary creature. As long as there are four or more lore counters among sagas you control, Tom Bombadil has hexproof and indestructible. Whenever the final chapter ability of a saga you control resolves, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a saga card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This ability triggers only once each turn, so if you manage to space out your sagas in the right amount of time you can literally cascade into a new saga every time you complete a saga really really cool card um, a lot of people are excited to build around this card this is one of the first cards in this set to be revealed months ago uh, so people have been excitingly building around this saga matters creature for a while I'm excited to see what people come up with. Uh, next up is Ulguk. Ugluk. Ugluk. I feel like I need to, like, say it from inside of my lungs. Ugluk. Of the White Hand. Two black and red for a 3 3 orc soldier. Whenever another creature you control dies, put a 1 1 counter on Ugluk. Uh, if that creature was a goblin or orc, put two 1-1 one -one counters on Orc instead. Damn. That's pretty good. Uh, actually, this is the last gold card we've got is the Balrog Flame of Udun. Ud Udun? Three black red for a 7-7 seven -seven avatar demon with trample. When a legendary creature an opponent controls dies, put the Balrog of 
flame of Udun on the bottom of its owner's library. Interesting. I feel like this should be way cheaper for something that is just going to be sent to the bottom of your library often. If you manage to get it back from the bottom of your library, it's just a matter of time before another legendary creature dies. It doesn't even have to be in, like you can be doing nothing and your Balrog gets sent to the bottom of your library because someone else kills a legendary creature. Interesting. Um, that's it for our gold cards. I really like Sharky. I think Shadowfax has the coolest flavor win in the entire set. Um, as far as like powerful picks, Sauron, the Dark Lord is one of the most powerful cards in this whole set. Um, I really like Ring Sight and I think... Uh, Galadriel it was really cool Gandalf the Grey is really cool but my pick for the most powerful my favorite card in the gold segment is Gandalf Sanction this card is insane if you're playing a spell slinger deck um, this can deal so much damage and it's a sorcery that can be copied so you can copy this numerous times and deal that much damage plus some um it is bonkers and i think it's going to be used to the demise of many a magic players thank you so much for hanging out while we go over the gold cards we have lands and colorless cards next um if you're watching this on youtube thank you so much for making it to the end of this video i would love it if you could like comment on this video tell me which of these cards you're most excited about um subscribe to the channel that would really help us out uh if you're watching on twitch thank you so much for being here um we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna jump into the colorless and land segment uh, on youtube the colorless lands link